וואו, וואו. תודה שדל... הלו. הלו. Yes, please say something. Rinpoche, we all have this oh, great oh. merit of benefiting from Rinpoche's presence here with us today. And so, speaking on behalf of all the students and all the staff of the summer program, from the depth of our hearts, we would like to request Rinpoche to please grant us the teachings of the most precious Dharma. Please guide our confused minds and give us teachings that will help us to purify our afflictions and that will eventually lead us all to all our minds to be liberated. Also, Sinsi Rinpoche is the founder of Ranjun Yeshe Institute. Uh, Rinpoche must have a treasure trove of advice especially beneficial and helpful to those of us who are studying the Dharma and the languages in which the Dharma has been transmitted. So please, Rinpoche, kindly accept to open that treasure and as much as possible, kindly share with us the jewels that it contains. Thank you very much, Rinpoche. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Number one, I want to say welcome to whoever I want to study Ranjung Ishi Institute and also whoever watching here, I want to say hi and we have very good translator so very I think very important to to all of you to to hear Papa so I want to uh, Kate, Professor Catherine please can you translate of course okay Lasso ta jiten che kham la sheja yunde mao jaya yore ngari yore thada ya Janya Mabo Yore, Mace Beke, Lojo Chiaki, Sarbaya Mambo, Jiu Dabare, Cheza, Lojo Chia, the Karchum Bari, Cheja Yundi, Jaya, the Karchum Bashidare, Tin Nansi to Tengaranto, Dua Miti, Miti, Simjan Santa Mandava, Tundua, Bambu Bushin Santa Mandava, and I Namjo Yabujari, Shero Yabujari, then I do send take a ditch some mind, but then she ditch it top top of dinner. Then she never do to a chachin culture shoot. I do Namjo Yabujari, Shero Yabujari. The picture down, I do to sang Yerada. Sang Jay said the curry. Jimmy sang, Shiny Jay's. Jimmy the curry. No more be deba tang sheji deba. Chempa ni se kare. Nelu cheta be chempa. Yishi sheje chenye be chempa. Dimi pa chata chepa sang sheng chenye yishi yong su dobe tangji se. Nadu re togo yara wa. Re re togo re ta mare se nadu. Tanbe chula jangba chirim chirim nishi chiru chiru. Chene tesum tane meba. Yeah, did the lamb churching the Yamsalana? Divan 
sanji ju kwa se do wa ya ta ti ma to na te ta dungal ke dungal na ba na so ba ji dewa ye na ya ta na ge dewa juriye ju ma de min do sa me ni ta ba de ne she ne she ta ni ju jo la la ji yong ta ju re ti cho wa ye na ane te san gon so la be ba ye na na ba ta ji ji be ko ba ta ta ju re in the world, there is so much that we could study and so much that we could learn about. In the past, there were so many different topics that we could learn about. And in these days, it's actually, there's more and more uh, every day, more and more things that we could come to learn about and come to know about. And of course, studying is important. It's extremely important for us to learn. But in particular, as human beings, um, we are different from other types of sentient beings. We have a certain sharpness. We have a certain capacity to know and to learn a certain uh, sharpness of intellect. And that means that we uh, have the capacity to train and develop in ways that bring not just happiness in this lifetime, but actually lasting, stable, unchanging happiness, the result of perfect awakening. That's something that we as human beings have the capacity to obtain, the capacity to attain because we have this um, particular quality of sharpness of intellect. We're sharp. We have this cap capacity, this capability. So what that means is that we actually, if we choose to do so, and if we pursue this path, we can become awakened. We can attain the state of Buddhahood, which is a state in which the two obscurations uh, have been totally and completely exhausted and cleared away. And the two types of wisdom have perfectly and completely unfolded. The two obscurations are the obscuration of the negative emotions and also what we call the cognitive obscuration. And we can totally and completely clear these away through training on the path. And likewise, we can totally uh, and perfectly unfold the two aspects of wisdom, the wisdom that knows the natural state just as it is, and the wisdom that knows everything that there is to know. We can uh, do this. We can totally purify the two obscurations and all of the habits connected with them. And we can perfectly unfold these two wisdoms. We have that capacity. How do we do that, though? We do that by learning the Dharma, learning the Dharma, studying the Dharma, and gaining a sense of real confidence in the teachings, genuine confidence to the point that we let go of all of our doubts. We cut through all of our doubts about the teachings, and we actually pursue the practice of the Dharma with complete confidence and certainty. And when we do this, we can clear away the two obscurations and all of the habits connected with them. We can um, actually unfold the two aspects of wisdom totally and perfectly. We can do this. And right now, in, if we want to do that, in order to do that, right now it's important for us to acknowledge that our experience here in samsara is a painful one. We have all sorts of suffering that we undergo. And on top of that, any kind of pleasure that we might experience is just seeming pleasure. It's not something real, genuine, and lasting. And so if, if we start with confidence in that fact, if we have a, a real sense of confidence, if we truly believe that that's true, then what that means is because we don't doubt that fact, we will be inspired to study the Dharma, to contemplate the Dharma, and to put it into practice. And then if we do that, if we put forth our effort in listening, contemplating, and meditating on the sacred dharma, we can awaken, we can become Buddhas, we can achieve that state. You're all very intelligent people. If you investigate this, if you really examine whether or not this is the case, you can check and you can understand with certainty how training in the dharma can lead to the state of perfect awakening. Nai chela tarpe lam tenji tarpa rangala ya ba shebrchi sa sanje ki ko injeba sunge injeba to injeba mabo ya ba injeba thamje na chot chorbe chot sunge injeba re 
Tesota, then Sajiki, Tarbata, Tamsin, be lamb, temperate, tem. Takanis temperate, son. Lapa, Lapa, Chudin, Lapa, Lapa, Tingins, Lapa, Lapa, Sheriff, Lapa, Lapa, Sum, Yabari, Lapa, Chudim, Lapa, and the Yavoson to know Rang Lu Lutan, Nata, Sim, Lu Gewa, Nat Gewa, Sim Gewa. Longa yesum, Shua, Dewa, Lepa, Gewa, 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 Mamita, police, treasure, tani, magua chagri, Shuachumba chagri, tells on the lava chudu, lava say, the shindu, naja carchumbare, Tina, Sanje, carisombare, Lunga, yes, would you go ne? Shella, Pemba cheese, Pemba can't to two cheese, Pemba chematonoya, Lu, ma, yes, would you go ne? She, some you can surely not say matches. Sorry. Tell us that they love to do the love get get shinda what it that thing but they are there so that Java China look in the way talk to you about my simple level the law let the ten it in your number way over you doing the trauma to so let the ten it answer the tongue my way over now some some law to let the ten it is simply change simply to simply new mamba that is negative, Lamedigo. Negative, physically negative, verbally negative, mentally negative. Negative the result is, is, is suffering. We are going to get to it. Tells on the long I use when you go in Niki, what the punk way to shed nature culture. But I'm so Sanjay, Jinju, Yoto, Joki, Yams, and Mansur, tell her, Pangoni, Hagum, said, or Nata, said, or Shila, Yamlin, she said, eh, Tambo, Yamlin, Mari. Tambo nyamle ti mege wa chute pang to ba chi. Tang nyibe nyamle ti ge wa chu. Te ye tok chok ge wa chu te tang tu yako wang to ba chi. Te yako che chong son na tang nga zu. Te ne chue chue ba sang li cha do yu ane. Te ne le te ne ane. Si la ki nyamle. Che zo ki nyamle. Lak par kap dir tan nga zu. Nang chue jang yu ane. Shung chabu, shung chabu jangwar chabu la, tene, lunga yesu gewa ye, gewe le chabu ye na, ane, cham ni ji chan ju seng ke kwar tang, chwe tam ju tong ni, dro jal yin bare, te kwar, de le labo, chen de koto gure, de le, cho sa, seng ye, dik ba, cho sa, dim chan, seng ye de karre, se me gewa, ju, ju sa, ju te pang na, Make it to bunk less, take Gavare. Take a dojo, Gavat you to Yams Lana, son of the sort, some you may have sang yard. So, so sat down. They do John Town, culture, to make it to bang water, dung, Gavat you town to lie at the center, nature culture, but a tea was a make it with John Shen, a two thousand Zepatang, give a yundation, men to short up a chin and Yams Lang Te tetang del betone, and to some nangayena, to some to do tapo shall. Shilatang, jazog in yamlin nana, and a jazog in yamlin, one eight and a shama, loma, nalma. And she shilak in yamlin, nalma, loma, shama yo, chagre, co work in nezur, carasine, lu gewa chavare, la gewa chavare, sem gewa chavare, lunga yo, sangma chavare, holy chavare, holy ta, tenele tene, tete som gomso, chete somso, shenya tene, tempata simsen ki chirtele, chava kari, chene chava tenke, one tane, yang taba, shh.
Uh, it seems that from my side, uh, Rimshi is not visible for a moment. Shall I uh, translate what Rimshi said up until now, until it starts? Can you hear me? Yes, please. Thank you. Let's do that. And then I'll just, Rimshi can continue. The Buddha said, I have taught the path that leads to liberation, but whether you obtain liberation or not depends upon you. The Buddha um, performed many types of awakened activity, his physical activities, activity with his speech, and likewise with his awakened mind. So he accomplished so many different things. But for us, what's most important is what he used his speech for, that is to say, teaching the Dharma. He taught the Dharma. He taught the path that leads to liberation and omniscience. And this for us is so extremely important. I'm just going to translate what I heard and then maybe you could continue from there. It's okay. Shall I just translate? Yeah. Please, okay. please. Um, so the Buddha taught the path uh, that leads to the state of perfect awakening. And he taught three types of trainings. He taught the training in discipline the training in meditation, and the training in wisdom. This is what he taught. And for us, what's so essential to begin with as our foundation of our practice is to begin with training in discipline, maintaining proper discipline. Because if we're able to do this, then uh, if we're able to turn our body towards virtue, to turn our speech towards virtue, and turn our mind towards virtue, the result of this will be that physically, verbally, and mentally, we will be more um, calm, more peaceful, more at ease, and we will be engaging in positive things, positive actions. And this is such an important foundation for us as Dharma practitioners. If we train in this way, uh, if we train with a proper discipline, then um, this allows us to be of benefit both to ourselves and to others. And if we study and reflect and meditate with this kind of foundation, then our uh, study, contemplation, and meditation will be of benefit uh, and will truly be genuine. So if we were to all practice discipline, if we train in discipline, then again, that brings peace to ourselves and peace to others. If the entire world practiced discipline, we wouldn't need any armies. We wouldn't need the police anymore. We wouldn't need any kind of weapons if everyone in the entire world practiced proper discipline. And so it's very important uh, in this way to use discipline as the foundation of our path. It's essential that we train in this foundation. The Buddha also taught us that it's important to use our body, our speech, and our mind to benefit others as much as we possibly can. And so that means to start by not ever harming anyone, not physically, verbally, or mentally engaging in any type of harm. This is important. This actually is a foundation of discipline. And if we were to uh, speak about it in a slightly more elaborate way, then we can speak about the discipline as abstaining from the 10 non-virtues. And so here we could say then that means physically to avoid the non-virtuous actions of killing, stealing, and sexual misconduct, to avoid those actions with our speech, to avoid lying, speaking divisively, speaking harshly, or idle gossip and chatter. And then with our mind, to avoid covetousness, to avoid ill will, and to avoid having wrong views. If we can do this, if we can avoid these physical, verbal, and mental negative actions, um, then we will have a good foundation for our practice. And if we do engage in these actions, we have to know that the results of non-virtue is suffering. That is true. That is real. That when we engage in non-virtuous actions, the result is painful. That's why it's essential for us to avoid non-virtue physically, verbally, as well as mentally. And that for us as a beginning Dharma practitioner is the most important thing. When we start practicing Dharma, we don't just jump right in from the very beginning into visualizing the deity, to reciting mantra, to engaging in even in shamatha and vipassana practice. That's not our first practice 
as Buddhist practitioners, our first practice is to avoid non-virtue, to avoid the 10 non-virtues. That is our first practice. Our second practice is to train in the practice of virtue, engaging in the 10 virtuous actions, which are the opposite of the 10 non-virtues, which we are avoiding. If you do those things, that's when you can start to say, I'm a Dharma practitioner. If we do this, if we avoid non-virtue and train in virtue, then we can say, I'm a practitioner. And then when we practice shamatha, then when we practice vipassana, then when we train in the generation stage and the perfection stage, then we will be able to train in a way that is genuine and our practice will go well because we are starting with a proper foundation. And here in this context, you're studying Buddhism, right? That's what you're training in. You're learning um, the great philosophical treatises uh, of the Buddhist tradition. If you begin with the foundation of being virtuous, physically, verbally, and mentally virtuous, it makes it a lot easier to train and learn about love and compassion and bodhicitta. It will be easy for you to learn those things. It will be easy for you to learn about and understand the reality of all phenomena as being emptiness. It will be so much easier to do all those things and to learn all those things if you start with a foundation of virtuous body, speech, and mind. We talk a lot about gathering the accumulations and purifying obscurations as part of the Buddhist training. But what does that actually mean? Well, it means avoiding the 10 non-virtues because when we avoid the 10 non-virtues, that itself is a virtuous action. The act of avoiding non-virtue is itself virtuous. And on top of that, if we train in the practice of the 10 virtuous actions, which are precisely the opposite of the 10 non-virtues, then this is a way of gathering merit. We are gathering merit through doing this. We are uh, gathering the accumulations. We are purifying our obscurations precisely by avoiding the 10 non-virtues and engaging in the 10 virtuous actions. So it's important for us when we think about the 10 non-virtues to actually regard those as being like poison. Think of those actions, those non-virtuous deeds as being poisonous and avoid them in the same way that you would avoid poison. Likewise, the 10 virtuous actions regard those as being like medicine and adopt them in the same way that you take medicine when you're ill. And if you do that, then your study and your contemplation will go well. You, if you're training in shamatha, if you're training in vipassana, it will be genuine. Your practice will be real. Your practice will be authentic if it's done out of a foundation of virtue. When you practice the development stage and the perfection stage, if you do this with a foundation of virtue, your practice will be genuine. Your practice will be real. You will practice correctly and properly. So it's so essential for us to train in this way so that our body, our speech, and our mind is clean. Our body and our speech and our mind will become holy if we train in this way. And then when we practice study, when we train in study, reflection uh, and meditation, whether we are teaching the Dharma or composing a text or debating, whatever it is that we're engaging in with respect to the Dharma, it will be proper, it will be genuine, it will be perfect, because we are starting out from a foundation of virtue and discipline. Che, I'm Dharma. Chen Ani Tarvata Tanjis in the Dusul, Dusul. Tell a two more tip, Gabke, Shilam Desu, Namsha. 
Tepa Chawa What is the Dharma? The Dharma means that which we can come to know, phenomena. That's another way of understanding what is meant by Dharma. And what is included in that? In that? Well, the outer world which we perceive, the inner perceiving mind, the path that leads to liberation and omniscience, and how to follow that path and train in that path. All of that uh, is included in what we call the Dharma. It's extremely profound. It's unbelievably vast. You could spend years and years and years of your life training in this and learning about this. But despite that fact, there is no teaching of the Dharma that is not included in what we call the three trainings. And the first of the trainings is the training in discipline. This is the foundational one. And what did the Buddha teach with respect to that? He said, the Dharma is avoiding harm. This is what the Tathagatas have taught. So how should we practice the Dharma? We should avoid harming others. This is so, it's absolutely essential. It is so important physically, verbally, and mentally to avoid harm. And not just to avoid harming human beings, to avoid harming any being, every sentient being down to the tiniest little bug. We should avoid harming others. The Dharma is to avoid harm. This is what the Tathagatas have taught. This is so essential for us to remember. And again, what is the Dharma? How should we understand the Dharma? The Dharma is the teaching, a presentation about, an explanation about the outer world, which we perceive, and everything within it. The inner perceiving mind itself, the path that leads to liberation and omniscience, and how to train in that path. This is what we learn when we study the Dharma. It's presented in different ways as well. We talk about the foundational vehicle of the Dharma, and there there is, uh, we can talk about the ground, the path, and the fruition from that perspective. Likewise, from the perspective of the Mahayana, the great vehicle, we again can talk about the ground, the path, and the fruition from that perspective as well. And then in the Tantric teachings, the Vajrayana, we can speak about the different levels of Tantra, Kriya Tantra, Charya Tantra, Yoga Tantra, Highest Yoga Tantra, Yoga Nirutra. There's so much to learn when it comes to studying the Dharma. We could spend our whole lives studying the Dharma. I'm um, more than 70 years old now. I'm still studying whenever I have the time. It's something that we can truly continue to do for our whole life. And the more we learn, the more we realize I still have more to learn. <laughs> so this is something that um, we can continue to study and to learn about the sacred Dharma for our whole lives. And the more we learn, the more faith we have. The more faith we have in the Dharma, the more trust we gain. 
our trust becomes deeper and deeper, greater and greater. And our effort towards the practice of the sacred Dharma also increases the more we gain this type of faith and trust. And we're all the same. It's like that for everyone who practices, including myself. When we practice the Dharma, what is our first practice? Our first, our foundational practice is avoiding harm. Again, to avoid harming others is the Dharma. This is what the Tathagatas, the Thuskan ones have taught. That means that's how the Buddha's practiced in the past, by avoiding harming others. That means that's how the Buddhas of the present practice. And that means that in the future, the Buddhas will also train in this very same way. How do they train? In avoiding harm. What is the harm that they avoid? At the very least, we have to avoid the 10 non-virtuous actions. At the very least, that's the minimum that we have to start with for our practice. And how does this help? What's the benefit of avoiding these 10 non-virtuous actions? It's that it brings peace to ourselves and happiness, and it brings peace and happiness to others as well. And from the Buddhist perspective, we um, talk about there being not just this experience, this present experience, but we say that there are three realms, and there are six classes of sentient beings that live within the three realms. If we avoid the 10 non-virtues, we can be sure that we will not take birth in the lower realms as a hell being, as a hungry ghost, as an animal. This we can avoid through training in the 10 virtues, avoiding the 10 non-virtues. And that is an important benefit of avoiding non-virtue. Make it your power, you know? Make it power, you know? Lula Tawa Yin Lang Maris. Nang and so so the check was some night. Then they check to Maris. Then I saw the Megit Chupong singing the Java Top Chamberella, good work in nature. It is natural law. It's it's natural law. It's it. Uh huh. Uh huh. If we avoid the 10 non-virtues, it is certain that we will never take birth in the three lower realms. And that means even if you want to, you won't be able to, even if you think I want to go to the three lower realms. And so, in fact, we have to acknowledge that that virtue, the virtue of simply avoiding the 10 non-virtues is very powerful. It's very powerful. As Rimshi said, to avoid those 10 non-virtues is just truly natural law. Turkey, Shila Gombayana, Cheso Yamle Chavayana, Yamle Yahu, Yoyaki, Savay, Savandavati, Miki Chupawatan, Gawai Chutan to Nava till it took your Tangaras Gange till a tonasuba Chego Gre. This is the foundation for our Dharma practice, and it's a very important foundation. If we don't do it properly, if we don't properly avoid what we should avoid and do what we should do, if we, uh, if we lack that foundation and we do a lot of shamatha practice, even if we, we do a lot of vipassana practice for a long time, if we train in the generation and perfection stages for a long time, recite a lot of mantras, do a lot of meditation, without that foundation, our practice actually won't bring that much benefit, honestly. And so... That means if we want to train in shamana, shamatha, if we want to practice vipassana effectively, if we want to practice the generation stage and the perfection stage, all of those practices, the root, the foundation of being able to really get benefit from that practice is avoiding the 10 non-virtues and practicing the 10, 10 virtues. This is really, really important for us to know and to understand and to take seriously. 
Tabachi, the Sanjee Tempati, Lundo Nilara Lever, Lungi Topati, Che Nien Nilaraga, Chebata Nyeba, Chebata Nyebata, Chebata, Zamba Lara Lady, Tesota, Tinti, Putapoche Chona, and the Sanjee Sobiki, Chusu, Tin, Jizen, Kamla, Putapo, Netogre, the Tapper, eh, Putapoje Yovare, Ta Maun Jungjula, Chiri, Gintupata, Tumasoke. Telatona Nangarela, Tation to Nanchula, Tona, you can gange, young by a pochin. Jave cut a tuba, probably loot a tuba. What of the repatter tuba, la memerata tuba, Yana, Jave cutsaba, probably loot a man, what of the repatsama. Menak in Yamu Semas, that Semat and Jelnebin. Young by Chesul Tela, Tresam Tavilu, Sesuari, Tesosa, Ranju, Isu, Lacharan, Chir, K, Lever Kiketa, Nepal Liketa, Sheer Kiri, Lobjon Chat, Karchimbori, Tinane, and Nansul, Donace, Shumchimbot, Lobjon Chat, Ha, Lever Yabori. At the Nepal Kinju to Karchimbot Chirari, Oma Tava Sherapta, Oma Jenta, Oma Jupata. ทีนี้ฮาเลเปกาคาลชมบอสาบอเรเทสอนซาเทเนกชาดาบะจังเดยจังเดยเนตาตาตาลูอุสุเตมาบุจิซุจุเกยอร์กันมาดอลยอร์
is the approach of studying and reflecting upon the view. We use reasoning, we use logic as an approach uh, to the sacred dharma. And in this particular context, it's, it means that we don't just um, follow only uh, the words of the Buddha, but we actually examine and investigate and use our own logic, our own reasoning, our own mental sharpness to engage with the teachings of the Buddha. That means we investigate and examine the view, we investigate and examine the meditation, we investigate and examine the conduct, we examine the result. We actually investigate what is the result that comes from these practices. So that means that we examine fully the ground, the path, and the fruition. There's a tradition of examining the Buddha, examining the Dharma, examining the Sangha, really investigating, really using our reasoning and our investigation, checking really well. And doing this really well when we train very carefully in this approach of studying and reflecting upon the view, using a lot of logic, reasoning, investigation, examination. When we do that, then we're able to arrive at a sense of certainty with respect to what we've examined. And when we arrive at that certainty, that's very important as a basis for our further practice. The Buddhist teachings um, in, uh, we could say are expressed in terms of the Dharma of scripture and the Dharma of realization. And when we approach the Buddha Dharma from the perspective or the context of this, um, this approach of studying and reflecting on the view, then teaching and listening to teachings is so important. Uh, investigating, examining, debating, right? Um, debating about the topics that we're learning. This is the one method or one approach for studying the Buddhist teachings. And if we do this method, if we follow this method, and if we do it really well, then we become able to truly uh, have a very good understanding of the Buddha Dharma, and then we can actually uh, understand very well what the Buddha has taught and put it into practice. And if this kind of tradition, this approach of studying and reflecting on the view remains in the world very well, then the Buddha Dharma uh, can remain really well in this world, this tradition of teaching and listening to teachings and examining and debating and so on. And right now, the teachings do remain in the world. And in the future, to ensure that this kind of uh, tradition of the teachings of the Dharma remains stably in the world, it's very important that the monastic Sangha, that our monks and our nuns continue to study and to learn these teachings and to retain them and pass them on. That's very important that the monastic Sangha, the monks and the nuns continue to study in this way. So here, um, we, what what we're relying upon in this particular approach to the Dharma is the uh, valid words of the Buddha, the valid um, scriptures composed by noble beings, our own valid reasoning, and the valid instructions from a teacher. So we talk about the valid words of the Buddha, the valid scriptures, the genuine, authentic uh, reasoning and logic, and the genuine type of experience that arises genuinely through training in the pith instructions. This becomes the foundation for our practice. And if we train in this way, following this approach of studying and reflecting upon the view, then this is extremely beneficial for us in our practice as well. So here in the Rangjun Yeshi Institute, you're studying a lot of different things. You're studying languages, Sanskrit language, Nepali language, other languages. And in particular, also you're studying Buddhist philosophy. You're studying the great scriptures, the genuine scriptures, um, the great philosophical treatises of the Buddha Dharma, uh, texts like Mipam Rinpoche's uh, Gateway to Knowledge. This is such a precious text. Um, the uh, Mula Madhyamaka Karikas, the uh, Madhyamaka Avatara, uh, the Madhyamaka Alankara, these texts are so important, so extremely precious, very, very profound. These teachings are, and these texts are extremely profound. And those of you, um, so many of you actually want to learn these things and you're interested in studying the Buddha, Buddha Dharma and the languages that are connected with it. That's really wonderful. So many of you, the fact that so many of you have really chosen to come and learn about the Dharma uh, and to study these uh, different traditions. I think this is so wonderful, really from my heart. Um, I, I'm uh, delighted that you have this interest in learning and studying. But what you learn, it's very important that you actually apply that 
Don't just learn it, but actually put it into practice. And how is it that we can go about doing that? How is it that we can apply or put into practice what it is that we're learning? Well, the place to start is by avoiding non-virtue. Don't harm anyone. That's the place to start. And then when we talk about uh, training in the Buddha Dharma, we train gradually, step by step. So if the foundation is discipline, then the next training is meditation. That's what uh, comes after. That's the next stage of practice or training. And so we talk about different types of meditative equipoise, illusory meditative equipoise, the heroic meditative equipoise, vajra-like meditative equipoise. There's so many different ways in which we can learn about or we can train in meditation. And these also are topics that our teachers, the Kempos, are teaching about and explaining and will explain. And in the Shedra, uh, in our study program, we also have a meditation class, a time in which students can uh, put into practice what they are learning. And this training in samadhi, training in meditation, is so important. Not that we just only hear the teachings, but that what we have heard, we actually take to heart and apply and put into practice genuinely. If we do this when we train in shamatha, calm abiding, uh, when we train in Vipassana um, insight, then we're able to train in a way that's genuine and valid and correct, uh, and it will bring quite a lot of benefit for ourselves and for others. And, you know, the benefits of training in meditation, uh, there are many of them, but at the very least, uh, one thing that's really helpful for us is that we, um, you know, we're really moody. <laughs> we have a lot of moods. <laughs> and if we train genuinely in meditation, we can get past that moodiness. That's a benefit of meditation, <laughs> going beyond our moodiness. If we train in meditation, um, we can we can actually, it brings a lot of benefits to avoid depression, to avoid mania, being manic, being depressed, and being moody. We can get through that kind of emotional moodiness uh, with meditation. We can get beyond that with our meditation practice. So there's a lot of benefits of training in meditation. It's beneficial for oneself. It's beneficial for others. Um, and uh, this is something that's really important. So please um, pay a little bit of attention, uh, arouse some interest um, in, in, take some interest in meditation. I'm using a very simple language saying, no calm, no kind, no kind, no clear. So calmness is come from where? If we give up, then non-virtue, we will become very calm. And we feel, we feel it, oh, I'm good. I'm good, I'm doing good. We, we, feel, we feel very joyful. Physically, verbally, mentally, very happy and content. So that is just, calmness is very important. No calm, no kind. No kind, no clear. Ah. So if we practice thing in namely chena, same thing. Not easy to effect. If, if anything comes good, not much effect. If anything go wrong, not much effect. So I think it's a good thing. Tonon Jiden 
so donna na bi sho na la te sharap ko la ma bo so ya te na na ya te ne sharap sing te sharap salwa sharap ya chawa sharap salwa sharap nyurwa sharap nyurwa sharap salwa sharap tangwa sharap sharap ya chawa ta te ne na sha so ya re la so ba na shi jing a du jang ya re jang jang ne ko le ya ko le ne yam so la na ゆれ、ゆれて、じゃよ。じゃちょべしゃら。たんしゃら。さるしゃら。にゅるべしゃら。おそんとがるじゅ。にゅわよ。てにょな。たんばちゅじ。にゃめんきるんばたんまずべん
quite easy, easily. Otherwise, we don't know how to serve. So that reason is, to some time look at this, I'm going to say, the Sanjee Tempatin Zinkhen, the Trabata Ane Changpa Mare, Nanshu Lo Tona Yuekhen, Kanke, the Sanjee Tempatin Zin Seberin, Zin Segete, Zin Tan Tanjus, Long Tok Tempa, so Long Ket Tempa, the Che, Che Batang, Nye Batang, Tom Batang, Responsibility Chola Case Culture Sumarilatin Scholar practitioner Chagari. The Gigan to dry Professor in that Loma a dry Chadur. Then it double a dry Professor Mambochana and Sam Jobore. Sam Jobore. This was that that in San Zabul is such a casa color. Now to Janke Mambo, when a scholar practitioner Chagdu, then Azuganga Gagoya Jirela, Nancho Mamboji. Chijake Mambo the Jurdu, then Massive Kijur Yapo Mambo do, in a natural lot. Lobjo Yaboyoke, Professor Mambo do, Tesson Satara, and Juni, she church epicke, Institute Church epicke, Lomier Watson, a Tunje Yabodo, Tunje Yabodo, Lomaina, the Eric Capsula Pecal Havoyore, Eric Tetchis of Thomas of the Andres of the name. Hide the approach of studying and reflecting upon the view that approach to the Buddha Dharma is very important. And it's very important because it's important that there are those who uphold the Buddha's teachings in the world. And this approach to the Buddha Dharma is important for upholding the Buddha's teachings. And of course, that's the responsibility of monks. And of course, that's the responsibility of nuns. 
But it's not just their responsibility. It's also the responsibility of everyone who is a Buddhist practitioner to uphold the Buddha's teachings. And how do we do that? The Buddhist teachings are the teachings of scripture and the, te- and the Dharma of realization. And the Dharma of scripture is upheld. It remains in the world through the tradition of teaching and learning, studying, debating, engaging with the teachings in that way is a form of, a, of upholding them. And that is also your responsibility. It's all of our responsibility to do this. And, you know, it's, it's funny if we think about the past situation. In the past, um, there were uh, a lot of really incredible masters, but there weren't um, so many students. And those great masters, you know, they didn't speak English. The students, there weren't that many of them, but those that were interested in studying the Dharma, they didn't know Tibetan. So there was a language barrier. Um, And so there was some difficulty at that time. These days, um, there are uh, more and more people who are interested in the Buddha Dharma, but to find the kind of great masters that were present in the past is difficult. It's quite rare, actually, the kind of extremely learned, extremely accomplished masters that were present in the past. There were so many of them at that time, but then there weren't students um, who were connecting with them. There weren't people who really had that interest in the Buddha Dharma at that time, in large part because of a lack of uh, language uh, abilities, and they couldn't understand each other. There weren't so many Dharma texts available in other languages at that time. There weren't very many translators at that time. And so honestly speaking, we lost a lot of time. There are many years lost to the fact that there were these great masters present in the world, but no access to them because of the lack of um, language training. Um, And now, again, there's so many people who uh, really want to study and reflect and who are seriously interested in the Buddha Dharma all over the world. Um, But that kind of great teacher who is so learned, so accomplished, they're very rare. Of course, there are people who know the the texts, who can explain the text for sure. And certainly there must be some people who are really um, trained in meditation, Uh, but there's not that many left. Um, So that's the situation that we're in these days. But for our own personal practice, what's so important is that we don't, uh, that we keep our study, reflection, and meditation practice uh, together as a unity, that we practice these things together in a unified way rather than isolating one from the other. That's really important. And so it's really important that we train in that way, that we study, reflect, and meditate together. Um, And if we do this, then our practice will go well. What's the point of training in the Dharma? What's the most important uh, reason why we would learn the Dharma? The most important reason for learning the Dharma is to become a Buddha, to become awakened. That's why we study the Dharma. That's the point of the Dharma, actually, is to become awakened, to become a Buddha. So we should generate that intention. I must become awakened. I want to become awakened. And therefore, I must train in the three trainings, right? The training in discipline, the training in meditation, the training in wisdom. If we learn about, we should think, I want to learn about wisdom. I want to learn about that those teachings, If we learn about the five paths, if we learn about the 10 bodhisattva grounds, we should learn about them, those things, and then we should actually apply those teachings directly into our experience so that we travel the bodhisattva paths, that we traverse them, that we move through them towards the state of awakening. That should be the reason behind, the point behind our study, um, that we study the Dharma in order to achieve the state of awakening. And then we can actually progress through those states. We can arrive at the state of the Dharmakaya, right? Realize the Dharmakaya for our own benefit, um, attain the form kayas in order to benefit others, and so on. That's why we practice the Dharma. And it's very important to train in this way. Please keep this in your heart. When we look around the world these days, there's um, more and more people uh, in all over the world, um, in the West and other places where Uh, who are learning the Dharma. There's uh, professors who teach about Buddhism in all over the world. And these days, more and more of them uh, are scholar practitioners, not just scholars, but scholar practitioners. And I really rejoice in this fact. I think that's something that's so uh, wonderful and so important. Because if the professor is a scholar practitioner, then that means the students themselves are so much more likely to be real scholar practitioners. 
if the professor is just a dry teacher engaging with them material, a dry professor, the students end up as dry, uh, their engagement with the, the studies as well. And that's that's really sad, actually, when that is the situation. It's quite sad. So um, these days in the world, it's uh, increasingly not like that. Increasingly in the world, there are more and more people who are interested in the Dharma and learning about the Dharma, but engaging with the Dharma as scholar practitioners. And this is something that we should all rejoice in, that we should all really take delight in, because it's a wonderful situation. And these days, the Dharma is available so much more widely in the world in so many different languages, right? There's a lot more uh, translators. There are a lot more scholars, scholar practitioners who are familiar with the Buddha Dharma, taking, for example, Rangjung Yeshi Institute among there are so many different places where the Buddha Dharma is taught. But for example, at Rangjung Yeshi Institute, the the circumstances, the situation, the conditions that we have for studying the Dharma now are so much better than they were before, honestly. Um, think about when I think about the past time, like the time when Eric um, was around as a translator, that time it was hard actually for people. Their resources just were not available in the way that they are now. And even after that, in the time when Thomas and Andreas and Heidi and Tina were around at that time, still it was difficult. Still, there weren't so many translators in the beginning then, uh, and not so much Dharma available. And there wasn't, the teachings weren't available in so many other languages. And there was a lot of hardship that those students had to undergo uh, to access the Dharma. Now, Catherine, in your time, it uh, got a little bit better. The situation improved a little bit. And these days, honestly speaking, it's pretty good. Uh, the situation in terms of our resources and access to the Dharma, um, the, our ability to study, to contemplate, and put the teachings into practice uh, is much, um, it's much better just due to the circumstances um, that then make the Dharma more accessible and available. So this is something uh, really wonderful. Eric, we have no temple. The first Kempo in our Ganyi Shudra building is Tanguru Bache. We invite him and he taught a whole year in our uh, two months. Then after that, Kempo Rinchen, Kempo Kedu, Kempo Dasher, but only one Kempo, two Kempo. Now we have many Kempos, many Lutons, Many excellent translators, many Western professors, not just professors, how many books they wrote, how many Dharma texts they translate. If you check, you will be surprised. And also, now, after two and a half years, many nuns becoming Lutheran Acharya. I went to Nakikomba and check how they. Uh, how they're doing from the youngest yeah uh, they really study very hard also they who study shada they memorize kenjuk domjang and umala jupa whole umala jupa and some are shirshin shirshin sawa and uh, also some other texts like Junju chap some chapters. I'm quite surprised. Not only memorize the root text. When 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 I ask question, answer is very, very good. Also their mark, marks are very good. So soon many nuns become professor. Not not probably we call uh, Acharya, Acharya, Lupin. And then if they continue to teach, if they become a really expert teaching, and uh, uh, if they, you know, uh, their ethics good, their meditation good, if their realization good, then we will, they, they, everybody will uh, agree. Then we will give title of uh, chemo. Kemo means Kenpo is male Kemo, Kemo. So these are our success. So now, 
Second is Goma Mengak Lu Sente, Tatanda Pirinella, Losum Chosum, Yamsum Lang Sulti, Takoma Mengak Lu Re. So the currents of the Shungchimbal Jangba Chen Yonke Kashej Mother Mavari, Shungchimbal Jangba Chen Yonke Kashej Mother Mavari. Then tell her Goma Mengak Lu Lojonker, Love Semi she will lump. That it to mock tempers. Jordan Lessing at the Suju Uma, Uma watchable, the Tawate Tashi the Trova Jet the Traveler. Yobrinzilla, Yobrinzilla, Tori me, Mabrinzilla, my Yobrinzilla, Tarpa me, Mabrinzilla, Toriaca, New Sinzabar, Miship, Nimijigan, Chikarsha, so the Tashi Trova. Yet a traveling, somewhat opening near Chimashi's tona, and it Trulba Sangari. No monk segari, Trulba Sangari, Trulba Tata Danga to Trulderi. Trul. Seems to Trulla now, say. Trulla yore, then it Lam Lock, Lam Tor, Sip the Cora Cham, Satachi, the Red to the Marit, Tachi Tango Mother. Touch your matana to catch a catch of oil, catch a zapchamber catcher, hammer sub catcher of chariot. You know, you are Jabach and the way this lam law, lam dor, sip your core chum. Size is chill, love your chair, Niamle chevy, make a good body, manzo, lam law bottom, lam torwa, lam law, lam torlu, mandrovachi. Now to tap a lamness in tobacco, tap a lamnit, Javan dilla, tap a lamness in tobacco, eh? Teach it all as. To Lama Topa Rabjida Loma Karsorta, Wang Borapsi, Tel Wang Borapsi, Tinrechi, Lalo, Tempting Dina, and Tresong Mobo, Temagoba. Gomba, Nenata, which is the Mambo, young, today, Kao Mobachi, Magovala. Tit of me, she sent up to Poa, so you tend it. Young boy over it. You know, you take a combore, combore. A combo in between the Lama. Top a shot in the company, Loma on Borate Combari, Combari. There's also Tati, a Luxum called a shivery, Tessan Tavi Lu, Gomba Manga, the Lu, Chalapa, the Lu, that on the Parisella, Lossum Chosum Tate, the Gomba Manga looked after Chen and Yamsa Langiore. There's also the Gomba Manga Luce, the Chalapa Luce, and Luxum. Tatina and the Sundor in the Tanga to tell the Chene, part of now at the Shardier, Amen and the Chene, so the Machika party Chene, part of now at the Shard, Metapala Taparzin, Medembala Temperzin, and Mizawala Tamarzin, Tabeba la Tatunzini, Lamlo Lamder, Sipicor, Chamgiori, to some cherim cherim tate, Lamlo, letter giori, Lamlo, Lam Torwata, Lamlo. And the simple coral letter gear, tar, the terry. Len your trunal letter, tarpa, len your trunal letter, what's chegor. Take chever chevala, truna, tarsu de chevor, tarsu shed, the chamber chevala, to a sunk with sherat. To a sunk with sherat, de tuba de coyula mahava, malava. Tawat a catcher to coyula malava, chen, yams and uncle. Yamsulana, Trovata, or Yamsulana, better than your tools, that was your theory. Or today, then the tool of Sharota, Naro Nala, Tatanga, Jenny, part of the Nava Sharot theory. The Nancy Telatine, 
something to pardota, a melancho pardo, something, something to Yabrishano, Coralino, Madre Jory, Pawandrove, something torchita was thinking, say, eh, Jamada with this, Pawandrove thinking, torchita with thinking, Coralino, Madre Jory, Teletine, the partucir. The melancho capsula, Maranto, Nieti or the Nikudi or the tenant. Nimen or Nashi, she Nima Shar. Then Dodo Chalanga Niman, Nimuk and Nashi or the Tel, Milam Nitrus in Nawas. That's all your tatin, Chica Pardojin. Pardo, Chita Pardos and Chical, Chical. You want not to put the time, you want not to do shower it in you, the top of it, you want not a part of it. Not to yar shower it, yar shower. Nandu,一个比如说，一二，一二那阵子，六百九，当个百九，当当当，当个啥？我个嘛，个啥？我我我也看呀嘛，但是六七十九，不，就我我就不不，就我那怕刺激个嘞。这怕，这这这，但那些
Profound and peaceful refers to the fundamental teachings of the Dharma. Profound here refers referring to the uh, wisdom of realizing the absence of self. Peaceful refers to the conduct of um, not harming in, in any way, uh, the path of the peaceful path of non harm. And when we talk about uh, simplicity or freedom from conceptual complexity, this refers to the unified view of the great Madhyamaka. The unified view of the great Madhyamaka is one that is beyond the four extremes, that is beyond any type of conceptual elaboration. If we grasp to things as being existent, we can't obtain liberation. We won't be liberated. If we fixate on things as being non-existent, even being born in the higher realms is difficult. You can't hold things to be both existent and non-existent as once, at once. So let go within the non-dual state and remain within that state. So this is the uh, training. And here again, we're speaking about realizing that genuine emptiness, which is totally free from any type of conceptual elaboration, totally free from any of the four extremes, profound emptiness. When we realize profound emptiness genuinely, our delusion is cleared away. Our negative emotions are cleared away. They go away. Right now, we have a deluded experience, the deluded experience of sentient beings. We are deluded as sentient beings. Our experience is confused. We um, are on the wrong path or we leave the path behind and we wander in samsara. Now, is it really like that? Check, examine. If you don't check and examine, you might think, wow, that sounds really kind of extreme, but it's not. If you really check and examine, following the wrong path, leaving the path behind, that is why we wander in samsara. So why is it that we want to practice the Buddha Dharma and why is it that we train in the Buddha Dharma? It's because we want to avoid making mistakes on the path. We want to avoid uh, leaving the path behind so that we can actually traverse the path genuinely and correctly and arrive at the state of liberation. We have to, at the very least, get on the path. That's really important. We have to do that. Get on the path. That's really important. And so we can do that through the approach of studying and reflecting on the view. Absolutely, we can. Um, get on the path. Set out correctly on the path. And then, of course, in the tradition of training in the Pith Instructions, in that tradition, we engage in a lot of meditation practice and training. So certainly there, we can say that we have gotten on the path that leads to liberation. We've entered that path. There's also a tradition, the third one that I mentioned is the tradition of the transference of blessings. Now that tradition is one in which, or that approach is one in which um, there is a teacher, a guru who has supreme realization and a student who has a very strong renunciation, weariness with samsara, genuine love and compassion and mm -hmm true devotion and pure perception, genuine devotion and pure perception. And so when that happens, when that type of uh, qualified teacher meets a student who has uh, also the right qualifications, if the teacher is someone who has supreme realization, great realization, and if the student is one who has what I just described, we call that someone of the uh, perfect capacity or high capacity, then if the circumstances are correct, it's possible without studying and reflecting and without really needing much uh, to put forth much um, training in meditation, much hardship in that way, it's possible for the realization to uh, be directly transferred to the student so that they realize it in a moment immediately. That is possible. Uh, it's rare. It doesn't happen very often. And the reason why it's rare is because it's rare for there to be a teacher who has that kind of that kind of high realization. And it's also rare for there to be a student who has the kind of qualifications that are necessary for that to take place. It's rare, but it's possible. So these are the, tr these are the ways in which we could approach the Buddha Dharma, the approach of studying and reflecting upon the view, the approach of training in the Pith Instructions, and the approach of the transference of blessings. And as I just mentioned, the uh, three-year retreat that will be taking place soon in Gomde Pyrenees um, is one in which the students will be training in the uh, approach of training in the Pith Instructions. 
So here, all of us right now are in what we call uh, the bardo of this life. That's our experience. It's a confused place, a place of confusion. We uh, experience delusion here because we look at things that are impermanent and we think they're permanent. Things that are unreal, we grasp to them as being real. Uh, things that are in unclean, we think are clean. And we believe that we have a self when we don't. And so that experience is a deluded experience. It's a confused experience um, through uh, being on the wrong uh, path, through uh, leaving the path behind, we, have found, we find ourselves wandering in samsara. And so that's why we have to learn and reflect and meditate in order to actually be on the correct path that leads us to liberation. Liberation from what? What is liberation? Liberation here, and it's important that we understand what this means. Liberation means liberation from karma, liberation from the negative emotions, and liberation from confused experience. Being free from those things is what we mean by freedom. That's what we mean by liberation. And we not only need to know what it means, we need to know how to do that. How can we become free of those things? We do this through the wisdom that comes from learning and contemplating. We have to start with that. We have to learn. We have to contemplate. If we don't learn something, then we won't know how to train. So it's essential that we start with that kind of learning. But it's also essential that we don't leave it at a conceptual level, just something that we know in our head and don't actually take to heart in our experience. It's really important that we don't leave the view as just words just something that we talk about or just a thought that we understand in our heads conceptually. It's really important that we take the view and actually apply it to our experience because it's only by practicing that we can be liberated. I've said this many times. If they don't practice, scholars remain deluded. It's essential that we put the teachings into practice if we really want to become free. And now, right now, as I said, we are in what we call the bardo of this life. And that bardo, the bardo or the intermediate state of this life, it also has two separate bardos that occur within it, the bardo of meditation and the bardo of dreaming. The bardo of meditation refers to different types of meditation practice and the experiences that come with that. I spoke before about the illusory um, uh, meditation, the heroic uh, meditation um, the Vajra-like meditation. So there are different experiences, different from our ordinary experience that come about when we train in meditation in these ways. And each type of meditation brings its own experience with it. So this is the bardo of meditation, which happens during the bardo of this life. And then there's also the bardo of dream. We fall asleep. But in our mind, in our dreams, it's just like the daytime world, the sun is up, we have experiences that take place in the same way uh, that, they, that we experience things during our daytime life. And so that's called the bardo of dream. And it's also called double delusion, the double delusion bardo of dream. And then what follows after the bardo of this life is the bardo of dying. And what happens when we die is that we have to give back this body made up of the five elements. You know, we just have borrowed it. We've borrowed the five elements. We don't own this. It's not ours. Um, and so once since we've borrowed these elements, our body is just an agglomeration of these five elements that have come together. We've borrowed it. We've got to give it back at a certain point. Right now we're using it, but it's not mine. We don't own it. It doesn't actually belong to us. And so eventually this body of flesh and blood, this body that is made up of the five elements which have come together, will have to return it at some point to give those five elements back. And at that moment, when we die, the bardo of dying, all that's left once we've left the body behind is our consciousness. And without having engaged in Dharma practice, the consciousness at the moment of death is just like a feather being blown in the wind. We have no control of where it goes and what it does if we haven't done practice. So that's the bardo of dying. What follows the bardo of dying is the luminous bardo of dharmata and then the karmic bardo of becoming. There are six of these intermediate states, six bardos. The one that we're in right now is the bardo of this life. And it's essential that now during the bardo of this life, we use our time well. And the way to do that is to practice. 
It's very important that we do meditation sessions, that we actually put the teachings into practice. Do two sessions a day. At the very least, do one. Don't skip a daily practice session. And it doesn't really matter what practice we're doing. We can do any kind of practice. Uh, we could do, for example, the practice of a, a meditation deity, a yidam deity. So if you're somebody who's not very compassionate and, you know, we can just check our mind, like what's going on in there? What am I like, right? If you feel like you're kind of dull, okay, maybe you should practice Manjushri, who is the embodiment of the Buddha's wisdom. That will help. Or if you find that you're prone to anger, and you're not very loving and compassionate and kind, well, practicing Avalokiteshvara is very helpful. Avalokiteshvara is the embodiment of the love and compassion of the Buddhas, the compassion of the Buddhas. So in this way, we can uh, do the practice of a particular deity, or we could practice the Buddha Shakyamuni. We could do Buddha Shakyamuni practice. You can practice Guru Rinpoche. You could do Tara practice. Um, it really depends on what uh, our own interest is and our own connection, right, that we have to these different deities. Uh, all of them are embodiments of the qualities and wisdom of the Buddhas. We can speak about this um, training in them as being the single embodiment uh, of all of the, the Buddha's awakened qualities. So whatever kind of practice you're doing, whether it's a yidam deity practice or whether you're doing shamatha practice or vipassana practice, please make some time every day to do that practice. Spend at least half an hour doing practice, whatever it is. If you don't do that, if you're not actually making time and putting time into practice, um, then, you know, you want, you, if you want to attain accomplishment, if you want to accomplish something, we actually have to make some time for our practice and do it, right? What we're trying to do is to purify the two obscurations and all of the habits connected with them and to perfectly unfold the two wisdoms so that we attain the state of Buddhahood. That's the goal. That's what we're trying to do, right? So if we want to do that, we actually have to train. We have to practice. So best case, six sessions a day. If not six, then four. If not four, then two. But at least please do one practice session every day. Please do that. Please keep this advice in your heart. Also, online there's many online study uh, so please now you can call up online the mobile door the magic company yeah and then let's do something that must be sent to people you're it uh this was online could be not you die at all till a ton i have not on a cultural dose there's a lot of opportunities to learn the Dharma these days, even online, right? You have the opportunity, you have access in this way, studying, of course, through Ranjung Yeshi Institute, but also the training uh, and the practice of the Taurus Triple Excellence really is very beneficial for the mind. So please um, pay attention to the opportunities that are available and avail yourselves of those opportunities. Thank you. Nurturing I make it in the book, Chun 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 
تبا تر به کمپات ها تم جیسی با کمپات تم دی تبایی به سمجه تم دی تر با تم جیسی به لامن گوگی چی تی چور دنگا تیوزم چه با یس کمپات ها تی چور دنگا سوسا بچه چه با یس یا تم جی شندون تو او سا تبایی چی تو تو چه برم بچه سال تم دی اندی تبایی چی سور سو دی سبر ناورا شو دنگا چند با تو یعن جالیو Then I got a lot of attention to let a to this issue again. How should we listen to the teachings of the Dharma? How should we learn the Dharma? How should we listen? Well, we should avoid the three faults of the vessel, the six stains, the five ways of misapprehending or the incorrect ways of apprehending. We have to avoid all of these Right? Avoid the three uh, uh, stains of the three faults of the vessel, the six stains and the five ways of misapprehending. The, and then we should listen. And what are all of the details about those things? That's what the Kempos will explain to you in the coming days. They will explain and teach in detail how, in fact, we should listen to the teachings and hear the Dharma. But in short, the important factor is really our motivation. That's really the most important thing thinking to ourselves, I am learning this, I'm listening to these teachings in order to arrive at the state of perfect and complete awakening so that I will be able to benefit all sentient beings. So we have to acknowledge, you know, right now, I can't help all sentient beings. I simply don't have the capacity to help all beings. I want to, but I don't have the eyes of wisdom that allow me to truly be able to benefit. I just don't have the capacity to benefit beings. There's an example that's given sometimes the example of an, an old mother who can't see very well and also um, is handicapped, doesn't have the, her arms and legs. They don't uh, work properly. And she's um, sitting by a rushing river and her child is being swept away in the current of the river. She can barely see what's happening, but maybe she can see a little bit. But even if she could see, she can't do anything about it because her, she, her arms and legs don't work. She doesn't have the capacity, the physical capacity to save that child. But of course, uh, it's extremely painful to see that that is happening. So that's our situation right now. We might want to help sentient beings, but we don't have the arms and legs that have to give us the capacity to benefit beings. We don't have the eyes of wisdom that, that allow us to see clearly what in fact is even needed. And so because we lack that capacity, we can't help beings. And so therefore we should think when we're listening to Dharma teachings, I am listening to this teaching in order that I could obtain, I can arrive at the state of awakening, omniscience, liberation, so that I will then be able to help beings. I will then have the capacity to establish all beings in this state of perfect awakening. That's why I'm listening to the teachings. That's why I'm contemplating them. That's why I'm gathering the accumulations and purifying obscurations. All of this I'm doing for the benefit of others. So, and then having done whatever virtue we're engaging in, we should dedicate that virtue, um, all of it, to the benefit of all sentient I'm beings. Sure. And I'm so sure. this then is the way in which we should approach uh, the teachings. And uh, to do so with this uh, motivation of bodhicitta, whatever type of teaching we're receiving or practice we're doing, we should always have that kind of motivation. So that's how we should learn the Dharma. And uh, I will see all of you again and again. I wanted to say Tashi Dilek and thank you all so much. I'm very happy seeing all of you. And I'm very happy seeing our Professor John Dunn. John Dunn. And John Dan will go to teach in Austria soon. So I want to say thank you. That program is very important. Please go uh, uh, teach in Gombe, Austria. And there's four, five professors will give talk in Austria. So each of you, very important to listen to their teaching. One monk will teach and four or five professors together teach. And that is very, very important. Also, I'm seeing here a few great translators. One is Michael, Mikhail. Mikhail, he's a very good trans translator. So wherever you are, you need to help us to translate. You are the one of the best, not only best translator, very warm heart, very kind, very humble, very humble. 
I really am married. Also, our uh, Anna, Anya, Anya, I saw Anya. Yeah, yeah, and, and Dr. Shlim, please continue to teach medicine and compassion. That's very important. Medicine and compassion is extremely important. So, so in medically, in med doctors and uh, medicine pra uh, practitioners, they really want to develop their kindness and uh, tolerance. So, Dr. is really leading that. Please, Dr. continue that. And uh, in Austria, the professors will come teach uh, yeah, very intensively. So, if you all, if timing is okay, good to listen to the teaching. I don't know, timing is for me very confusing. So, thank you very much. I'm so happy. All the best. Let's go. Let go. Let's, let's, let's go. Let go. That is the point. That is the trick. That is the trick. That is the point. How to how to how to get rid of, of confusion. Let go. Let's go. Let go. Finish. Job done. <laughs> okay. Bye bye. Kevade chogo sonami shu sobo sonami shelle tambaku ni tobori shu. Thank you very much. All the best. Bye bye. Katrina, thank you. You translate very well. Today I not so Austria. Is there Austria? There, there, yes. Yeah. Um, I see England. I see. Oh, now I saw Austria. Yes. Wow, a lot of people in Austria. I saw England. I saw Scotland. I saw. Oh, oh. I hope soon we will set up a very good Buddhist high uh, 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 institute in Gondé, Austria. <laughs> help, help um, our professors. Uh, help our professors. John Dan, please help us. <laughs> So done, help us. <laughs> okay, bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. I think Lakshmi wanted to say something. Okay. Tell me it's okay. Sorry. Yeah. Too, too low. That's the Lady Rinpoche, young girl. Dear Rinpoche, it's on behalf of ROI staff and students and everyone among the audience, um, please allow me to offer virtually and visualization the enlightened body, speech, and mind. Ribushila, please accept this because we want you to be physically, mentally, totally prepared and healthy so we can continue to receive the profound and precious teachings from you. So please, please be there. Please come to teach us again. Thank you so much, Ribushila. Okay. I will I will keep all of you in my prayer. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye.